By this point, it should be no surprise to anyone what my feelings are when it comes to sharing your artwork with folks. But today I'm going to take it a radical step further and say that at its best, art can and should be a team sport. I'm not just talking about collaborations either, but the full 360 degree aspect that goes into the process from creation to collaboration, including teaching, learning, mentoring, supporting, producing, and being a fan. These aspects seem to be obvious, yet so many of us spend years sequestering our art practices like medieval monks, toiling away in the dark at our manuscripts alone. Today, I'd like to encourage you to leave the monk's cloister and approach your art practice with me, together, with aid and support. Yes, it's true that what's most wonderful about an artistic endeavor is that the creativity, drive, and execution can all come from within you alone. You don't need anybody else's permission or support to make art. Not your parents or your classmates or your friends. In fact, many people across history have expressed themselves artistically in secret protest of their abusers and tyrannical governments. For quite a lot of people, making art that they cannot share with others is all that gives them peace and sometimes even keeps them safe. If you are one of those folks, please know that you are not alone in spirit and that there are so many people, myself included, that hope one day we can see your work and hear your stories. As for the rest of us, we have a very important responsibility to ourselves, each other, and the folks who might someday come forward and share their art. As someone who spent more years keeping my art in the dark than I am proud of, I really do feel that there is a responsibility we have to share our work in an art community that is supportive and reinforcing, like a team sport. I love to think about artistic creativity as a team sport because there are so many roles that are involved in one, and the fact that in many team sports the focus is on the team as opposed to the opponents. Like art, quite a few team sports have competitions but not necessarily opponents. I think that competition has about as much utility in art as it does in a golf foursome or a bowling team. Once it stops being playful fun, it begins being unhealthy and hurting your abilities. But for now, let's move on from the opponent to more fertile ground for help in the form of teammates. Teammates are the backbone of collaborative efforts and you can find them almost anywhere. If you have a friend with a common interest in the arts, then you just found a teammate. Even when those interests are from different mediums, that just means that you both fill a different role on the team, specializing the way that the kicker, quarterback, and special teams are all part of a football team. Remember that every multimedia artwork you consume from movies, music albums, video games, they're all interdisciplinary artists on teams to create them. Without good teammates, we'd never get the Avengers, Overwatch, or Sgt. Pepper's. You might already be part of an art team and not even realize it, like a school art class, an art discord group, or even the comment section in my videos. I often find that I get just as much support from other artists as I'm willing to give first. With all that being said, don't be afraid to offer someone a helpful critique, a supportive comment, or to reach out to collaborate with a peer. Often the only person who wishes you wouldn't reach out is a very small and dark corner of yourself. That part of you is one worth overcoming to find an art team. And what a better way to overcome those bad impulses and self-doubt than with a good coach. Let's talk about the perfect coach archetype. So much more should be said about our art teachers and mentors. Whether it's the orchestra director that always stays late, or the art teacher that never gives up on finding a way to illustrate new skills to you, the coach does so much more that should be lauded. We're all going to improve our craft with discipline and time commitments, but the coach shapes this with perspective and experience that comes with being further down the road than us. A good coach might be the first person we respect artistically that pushes us to go further with our sketches or to encourage us to enter our work in an art show. Some coaches will put you in touch with like-minded peers and leave you with the building blocks of an art team, ripe for the kind of discovery that can spark lifelong friendships. And yes, there are plenty of professional fine artists out there that still take on formal apprentices and mentor their students in exchange for assistance in the studio. That kind of internship on steroids goes back to the Renaissance tradition, and I knew a couple of people who apprenticed for a mentor of mine. 
they learned from our teacher and got unlimited studio access in exchange for assisting in studio classes, of which I was a student, and helping him with bronze sculpture welding and patina work. Imagine the kind of education you could get if you're willing to find the art equivalent of Vince Lombardi. The coolest thing about this in comparing sports to art is that by the time someone coaches a sport, they often no longer play or are past their peak performance. But in art, you can seek a mentorship and see as a student in the classes of the greatest living artists while they are still working at the height of their abilities. If you happen to be a professional artist and a master of your craft, maybe what plagues you the most is loneliness. Perhaps, between art commission assignments and non-disclosure agreements, you have a very isolated artistic life where you've lost touch with the fulfillment that was once there. I can't think of a better way to find a balance than being the mentor yourself and taking on students. Imagine what it can feel like to pass on what you've learned, if not the skills themselves, the perspectives you've gained from years of experience. If that isn't something that you really feel committed to, you could also start a communal studio or art collective. You could begin an art community yourself to bring people together in an informal way or run workshops from time to time. On a purely social level, I find that people passionate about something are happier when they are able to share that interest with other people. Okay, you've got your art teammates and your coach, so you're all set up, right? Not so fast. Every sideline has folks that play a very important supporting role, and that is the role of support. Just as teams have water boys and cheerleaders, the team around you as an artist is going to require some non-artist support. Maybe that's a parent, a sibling, or a spouse. Maybe it's a best friend that doesn't have much of an inclination towards art, but wants you to succeed. The only important aspect here is that they care about you personally, beyond the art, and want to see you succeed in a genuine way. Maybe your biggest cheerleader is your grandma, who painted or sang in her youth and loves to see you do great things. Knowing she's in your corner will make it even easier to have courage tabling at the art show or meeting with new people at the gallery. Your biggest supporters from your non-art life need to get invitations to your shows before your acquaintances because you know that their love and support goes far beyond the art context. From experience, I could tell you that having had my girlfriend, my mom, my brother-in-law, and his mom come through to my first art show felt like having an army with me in an environment that was utterly alien at the time. And I'm so grateful that they did. As artists, we have this really unhealthy tendency to consider that our entire practice is just us, the clay, and our mind. But there is so much more to it, namely the people around us. Besides the teammates, coaches, and support team, it goes even further to include the strangers that pack the stadium to cheer us on. It's true that you wouldn't have the New York Yankees or Manchester United without the fans. They are total strangers to the players, or in our case, artists. We would always continue to create without them being there in attendance, but you can't deny the impact that it has on an athlete or an artist when people who aren't emotionally invested in us care about and are moved by our work. There is a power to carry us and drive us on when we are weak by someone who doesn't know us yet believes in us anyway. You might be thinking to yourself, dude, what are you talking about? I have 200 Instagram followers and I get two or three comments when I post if I'm lucky. Sure, that is a far cry from Yankee Stadium filled with 60,000 screaming fans, but as an artist, that is to your advantage. For instance, remember the three people we mentioned earlier? They went out of their way in their busy lives to leave you a comment on your art because it moved them so much. Now, the New York Yankees don't have enough time to speak to every fan that enters the stadium attending every game, but you do. Imagine how accessible and cool that would make you. In a perfect world, you might not be able to do that at scale forever if interest in your work is growing but you should aim to engage with these supporters for as long as possible, if for no other reason than for gratitude that you have for their interest in your artwork. There's so much to consider with approaching an art practice like an idyllic team sport, and I hope that you do. It's a lot more satisfying for me to consider that everyone around me is on my art team, that there's overlap and positivity in all of the areas where like-minded people seek to make each other better. 
Until next time, whether you're a teammate, mentor, student, or fan, I hope you'll keep creating art in the role of player. Thank you.